Hello again, my name is Yaya and this is another video on measurements, correlation and model tuning. So this video will talk about how we can use measurements, drive test data, in order to correlate uh, the measurements with predictions that you do in the software and also to fine tune or model tune your engine for more accurate predictions. And this is, this video is slightly different than the P2P correlation that I've, that I've done um, a week ago. So this one we assume we have a fixed receiver height and uh, it's suitable for drive testing. So let's get started. Um, I've got here my test project. So let me familiarize you with this project. This is HTC communication by the way and you can use this feature on HTC Warfare. So here we have a DEM. This is a digital elevation model. This is based on 5 meter and you can see here we've got the, the, the rail cuttings um, embedded as well. And I have here a medium res clutter. So this this clutter is made of um, made of um, uh, mean mean suburban, dense suburban, mean urban, and so on. Okay, you've got rail. You've got multiple rail environments here: rail, open, suburban, depending on the uh, proximity to the nearest clutter. So we also have this offline image. I'm going to use for visualization. So the transmitter that we have here is this one. It's a CW transmitter and it's a 20 watt, 11 dBi antenna gain, Omni, running on 1855 MHz and antenna height is, is 13 meters from the ground level. And this is the antenna pattern, so it's Omni, and then you've got some directional um, on the vertical plane. That's it. So let's get ready. First, how do you import the measurements? So the project is here. You want to import the measurements, let me open the measurement file for you first. So you just to make sure everything is clear. So the measurement file is simply a CSV file. And you've got here, you've got here the, um, the longitude, the latitude, and you've got the signal level in DBM. And here we have the cosine or the name. Okay, so effectively this is, this is the longitude, the long, this is the lat, and this is the RSSI. And this one is the cosine. Okay, so the cosine is useful. Uh, this is available in recent releases, probably like the last couple of years. Uh, the, the idea is we can now correlate with uh, specific sites instead of just correlating with the heat map displayed on on the on the map. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Yeah, now you have good understanding of the measurements. So let me show you how you import the measurements first. It's not a compulsory stage to import measurements, but it's good to know, or it's good to see what you are up against. So go to import drive test, and then we can go with drive test generic format XYE, which is exactly what I just showed you now. So you click on the three dots here, and then you open the, um, the measurement file. So the measurement file is, um, we expecting this generic format X, Y, and field strength. Okay, so this is X, this is Y, this is field strength, that's good. And um, the coordinate system default one is Vodek and converter from DBM to DBU, we're using 143 here. Okay, the value, you can extract the value from DBM to DBU, you put zero here, and then you can get 143 or 142. So that, so that means um, the software is going to convert DBM units to, to DB microvolt uh, field strength units by using this uh, fixed offset as a correction. 143, update, and now keep the threshold. The receiver height is 4, it doesn't matter here really. Minimum threshold, go to down to 1 for now. I'm going to grab everything. So if multiple measurements are falling in the same spot, you could actually average them, or you can take the max, okay? So, um, or take the minimum of these. So in, in this case, I'm more interested in the average, in fact. So it will be more representative. So here we got now the measurements. So obviously the measurements have been uh, trimmed. Um, it is, um, it's been reduced. You see around the site, we removed a couple of hundred meters here, maybe maybe just 20 meters or 30 meters, actually. So, so that's what the measurement look like. Okay. So the the brown is strong signal and the blue is the weak signal. So it's going down to like 114 dBm around here, and then it's dropping under after that. And you can read the signal level here by moving the cursor. You can read the value in dBm. So anyway, that's not my interest. My interest is to do predictions and do correlation. So let's do the coverage calculation first. The receiver height in this case is 4 meters. I'm going to do it up to 4 kilometers. That's the coverage prediction done. 
Now I want to correlate. Before I correlate, guys, I want to make it clear. I, I dropped this threshold down to 1 dBU, which is neg 142 dBm, because I want the software to correlate uh, with the entire signal uh, range, regardless how weak the signal. But you have to be careful. Usually we, we do reduce the measurements uh, by taking out the, the, the noise floor. So in this case, I'm going to go down to 1, and the receiver has been calibrated, so 0 dBi gain. So let's start uh, doing the correlation. This is the correlation. So in the correlation, you specify the file. It's been already selected for you from the previous step. And use a callsign. Um, this is, like I said, it's very useful if you if you want the tool to specifically match the the measurement uh, file uh, with with a corresponding base station. So you can see my my base my base station is called Esky. So I can skip this feature for now because I, I already know these measurements done only for that site. So it should be okay. So for deck is uh, WGS84 decimal degrees. The separator is a comma. And you can see conversion coming from the previous step, 155 measurement range. You can update it if you want. It's all good. It's just going to extract the measurement range for you. Uh, but you can, you can take over if you want to reduce the brackets a little bit. So you can skip some measurements. And then uh, this is the correlation uh, window, 6 to B. Uh, so it will, uh, the software can produce some quick analysis, um, how many measurements are folding within 6 to B. So the reference here, the threshold for the correlation, I'm going to go down to 1 for now. But I imagine uh, the, the receiver sensitivity is not really going down to 1. It would be something around that figure plus a 3 dB. Okay? So you could, you could find a more uh, suitable value for your correlation. I can use 30 for now uh, for my correlation. And now the reference station is number one. I only have one station and I want to correlate for the entire clutter type. So regardless where the measurements are falling on the map, I would like to use them for the correlation. Now, the, sometimes the GPS is not 100% accurate. You've got like a 10, 10 meters absolute uh, uh, error margin. So if you want to compensate for that, you could actually uh, increase your correlation window, which means the software can nominate a pixel uh, uh, up to up to two pixels away or up to 10 meters okay in order to do the correlation so two pixels in my case a, a pixel is five meters so this is 10 meters so it's good enough hit okay and here we go so this is a very quick statistical report showing you the correlation between predictions and measurements so if you look uh, the yellow yellow is the measurements and green is the prediction so you can see here you've got 72% of the measurements falling within 6 dB of prediction. And you've got standard deviation of error in the order of 4.74 dB, which is really very good. It's really very good. But we can get much better than this. Okay. So usually when you guys do the, your, uh, your fading margin, your, your slow fading margin, you usually assume something like 5.5 dB. You multiply it by 1.64 to boost your confidence to 95%, which is roughly 9 to 10 dB. So out of the box, without any tuning, the software actually is producing in this area, on this frequency, based on these inputs, default inputs, terrain, clutter, and so on, we are producing 4.74 dB standard deviation of error okay and then you can see we are on average you are pessimistic by 3.2 dB we are pessimistic so what we predict is a little bit less than the reality okay which means you're on the safe side but 3.2 dB is is um is you can you can see you can see the green is below the yellow most of the time uh, and that's that has been uh, um, um, it really um, produced in the analysis here Nick 3.2 dB so this is the correlation window correlation factor sorry it's 95% so there is a 95% agreement in the trend, which means that the signal, if the prediction, if the measurements go down, prediction are going down too. They follow each other in terms of the, of the trend. And that's really excellent indication of um, whether you selected the right propagation model, whether your terrain is representative, whether your propagation model is, uh, is um, realistic in terms of um, um, predicting the behavior of the signal. So I'm not gonna talk about every single feature here, but uh, this is what you need to pay attention to, the 72%. And ideally, you want to get this around 90% plus, okay? 90% plus. Standard deviation, ideally, you want to be around around 3.5 dB, 3.6 dB, 3.5 dB. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that, because I know it's achievable in our software. And average error should be around next 0 0.1, okay? Next 0 0.0 dB, something like this. Correlation, you, can, you should be able to reach 98% confidently. 
Okay, so this here window, it will show you the 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 error distribution, the the error algebraic error distribution along the journey from the base station. So the base station, um, this is this is the the this axis, the the, the top the top x axis here. This is the distance. Okay, from zero to four kilometers. That's distance from the base station, and we are we are we are calculating the delta between prediction and measurements, and then we're plotting the delta as a map. So ideally, you want to be here in the middle all the time, zero. So the, the idea is, the idea is to analyze the error, the the error distribution as you go away from the base station. So that allow you to, for example, understand the the the, the antenna pattern uh, inaccuracy, or understand also the the propagation accuracy as you go close, as you come closer or further away from the base station. So this is the correlation window, guys. Now we can tune this a little bit, okay? So my 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 um, I've got multiple techniques to do the correlation. So you see here we've got correlation automation or tuning or uh, tuning automation based on clutter, based on uh, subpath attenuations, okay? Uh, so here, which means you can you can ask a software to benchmark different theories, the, the standard, the course, the fine, the area. So the idea is to ask the software to go and benchmark these different settings here and then show me which one is the best okay so that's that's the idea uh, another idea is that you guys you can go and change your propagation model you play with different theories and then do the prediction again and do the correlation again so um, unfortunately this video is going to be short so i can't talk about all these different uh, ideas um, but what i want to to bring to your attention here is that um, one idea is to examine which clutter is popular and which clutter you think the receiver uh, or the, the the is 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 um which clutter is actually going in the way between the transmitter and receiver so that red clutter here for example is significantly used is signal leaving the base station arriving at the rail line here it's going to cross all these red obstacles so that the red height estimate is important if i do it incorrectly it will impact the results so so you can hover the mouse here and then you can read on the on the information box here information box you can see this is called dense suburban it's number three dense suburban number three so maybe i could target number three i can do this manually or automatically manually is by going to number three here and then change the diffraction factor so one means 100 percent i can put it to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.4 and so on now if you don't want to do play uh, a trial and error uh, you could actually do this you can go to measurements and then you can go to tuning and then use the clutter tuning so clutter tuning here, I can actually use the measurements to help me uh, together with um, together with the um, uh, this approach. I'm not going to use linear approach. I'm going to use a diffraction approach. So usually I first target diffraction approach, or, or which means a height correction, height correction for the clutter. So our idea is not to play with the formula with the formula of the propagation model, but actually change the environment itself because the environment has been misrepresented here. So I can start from 0 0.4, for example, uh, as a diffraction, which means 40% of the current height estimate up to, for example, 100, 120%. Oh, sorry, 1.2. So 1.2 is 120% with a stepping of 0 0.1. So the software is going to iterate the clutter height. Okay, so it's a, it's a sort of a loop. And then it going, the software is going to run the correlation uh, um, roughly uh, we can see six eight times eight times and increment the height every time and benchmark and then and then we're going we're going to nominate for you the best settings which will result in minimum error in terms of mismatch between predictions and measurements so let me run this quickly now so this is fully automated the tool is starting probably with the first one you can see the bottom here 0 0.4 you can see 0 0.4 now and is examining the, the, the mean delta error. So this is a comparison between predictions and measurements along the samples. This technique is a point-to-point -point technique, which means the tool doesn't need to waste time doing predictions for the entire map. So I'm gonna pause the video for now uh, until this is finished. Um, I think it's gonna take just two or five minutes max. You can see now we're doing 0 0.6, 0 0.7, now it's a 0 0.9, so it's going up to 1.2. So now we are, I 
I think it's doing another round. Um, I had to I had to cancel the operation. I just figured out that actually I was doing all the clutters instead of targeting clutter code number three. So I'm going to repeat the process quickly. Measurements correlation. Sorry, measurements and tuning and tuning clutter. So here we go. That's my mistake. I should have actually targeted only number three because um, I don't want to tune the entire clutter because I don't think entire clutters are going to impact the propagations and red will be the dominant one. So there's no point you try to tune something which is not contributing. So I'm going to target only number three and back to my bracket 0 0.4 to 0 point, uh, to 1.2. All right, so this is the re the report. So in that report, you only see clutter three. Yeah, that's much better. I wanted to see only clutter three because that's the clutter I'm targeting. And then you can see here the different iterations, 0 0.4, um, which is 40% of the original height, 50% the original height, 60%, 70%, 80%. And then the tool stopped pro pro uh, doing any, any further because he notices no more improvements. So what do I, what can I conclude from this? So you can see 0 0.4, uh, the fraction factor of 40% is actually resulting in in roughly 80% score, 80.9%. And this is this is 81%. After that, it's a dropping to 79, and then dropping to 77, 76, and 75. So obviously here the best to take is 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So going back to the clutter settings here, so you can see the tool automatically applied the 40%. Okay. So now you change the environment, you need to run, run the predictions one more time to, to take effect. So this is the new predictions taking into account the 40% clutter corrections. Now let's do the correlation that we've done before. Correlation, just a comparison. Okay. And now we see that you've got now 81 or roughly 82% of the measurements are falling within 60B. That's major improvement from the previous uh, iteration. And you see here you've got 4.5 dB standard deviation of error. And then the average error has dropped to neg 152. And the correlation factor is 95% now, which is um, uh, a lot better than uh, what we had before. You can still tune this a bit a bit further, okay? But I, I, already, I already improved the model just by fixing the height of one clutter only. So there is another way to do further fine tuning is to apply the um, the tuning. So the tuning I can target, for example, specific clutters to correct it. So let me see which clutters I want to target. I want to target the clutters from 13 to 18. Okay, 13 to 18. So run the correlation. Correlation. Okay. And now you go distribution or tuning. So tuning, I'm not going to touch any of these. Okay. So I'm going to start from 13 because that's where I have measurements on the rail, on the rail corridor. I want to tune the rail corridor. Okay. So I'm going to apply it. Hit one here. Apply it. And then you should see the improvements. So the average error dropped to next 0 0.17 dB. And now we've got 86% of, um, of um, uh, measurements within um, 6 dB. So if you want this to take effect as well, Control K, run the coverage one more time. And then measurements correlation. Okay, here we go. So that's that's the final, I mean, you could do a bit better, but from my perspective, there's no point. Um, I, I already achieved 88% and I achieved here 3.9 dB, which is less than, less than 4.5 dB, 3.96 dB correlation. And then it got 96% here and then next 0 0.6 dB for the average error. So that's that's excellent. So this is, guys, how easy it is to use HTZ in order to do your uh, model tuning and model cal calibrations using medium resolution maps. So if you have any clarifications or any questions you would like to inquire about the product, please feel free to get in touch. 
and this is my email address uh, you can contact me or contact the company directly all good uh, thank you for your time and then um, stay tuned for another video